Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it's a beautiful day here in Southwest Florida. Uh, it is morning and I have something a little bit unusual that I want to share with you. It's not my typical type of share. Uh, what I want to talk to you today about is, even though I'm the plant propagator, and even though this is an orchid right here, do not propagate this orchid. This is the Chinese crown orchid. The Latin name is Eulophia graminea. And um, this is listed with, uh, within the state of Florida as a class two invasive plant. Uh, the origin of this is just Asia. It is, uh, there's a few non-native orchids that there's a lot of native orchids in this area, but there's a few non-natives. And um, the ones that I know, the ones that I've seen, uh, actually they're, they're, they're pretty common. Um, and they're not bad. They're only listed as a class two uh, exotic. And uh, this is one of those. And what class two means is that they haven't really been uh, known to outcompete the natives. They don't cause too much damage, but they're, they, they're still fairly common. Um, this uh, Eulophia is uh, growing in mulch. This is how it usually makes its way into the area. The seeds, as with most orchids, are, are small, they're dust-like, dust -like. they get intermingled with the mulch, and then when people spread mulch in their yards, the seeds germinate, it grows, and they do well. This is, it is um, mostly a terrestrial. The plants that I've seen are terrestrial, but it, it, it can be epiphytic as well. This is a really vigorous, small, I don't think it's fragrant. Uh, orchid, but it's very good, as with most orchids, of uh, producing large numbers of very small seeds that can be easily spread. And this one does that uh, as well. Um, so there's a few interesting things about this orchid. Uh, it does have a different, there's another species of Eulophia, Eulophia alta, that is a native plant, a native orchid, also terrestrial in Florida. I actually have Eulophia alta uh, in the laboratory. And um, so there's closely related plants that are native and because they're native orchids, they are, um, the, people want them. They're in a little bit of a demand. Um, and, and so it's, it's interesting, different species. And if you, if you know orchids, that means that this non-native, this exotic, this class two exotic uh, that you're supposed to pull and get rid of is compatible with the native that is, uh, that's desirable. Um, so it, so it's, it's an interesting story here. You, you can make hybrids, there's none reported of this, but you can probably make high, high, hybrids between the non-native and the native. Um, I contacted someone within the uh, Florida Department of Agriculture and asked them, um, you know, is this something that is legal, illegal? Is this, uh, you know, it's something, I don't really want to do this because the flowers are small, I don't like it. This flower, and then again, even the Eulophia alta, the native, it's not a really attractive flower. But, you know, is this something that is that is doable and would it, um, would it send up red flags? I have not heard back from them yet, so we'll see what kind of response uh, I get. There are, however, I looked up on orchid roots, this plant, and there are a couple of hybrids that were made and registered, I think in 2007, by a, um, by a, a company in Taiwan, by a breeding company in Taiwan. And they hybridized this to a Grammatophyllum and an Encelia. And there's no pictures of the hybrid and what it looks like, but these again are big, vigorous orchids. And the idea behind this type of hybridization and with the hybridization that I do with orchids is you want to take, uh, you know, a vigorous orchid and hybridize it with something to catch, capture that vigor. So um, this is a really vigorous plant and they're everywhere and 
they'll do it'll do well. Most hybrids that you can make with this, I would imagine, are going to do well. It, and again, it's not something I want to do. I was just curious about it more than anything else. Um, okay, so with this plant, what you're supposed to do is remove it. And so when you look at control, again, I'm talking about, you know, don't propagate this. I'm talking about how you control and remove an orchid from, you know, from your yard. Um, and I also should say, even though it's not listed as it doesn't displace any native, it's not a, it's not a class one, it's only a class two. Um, even though that is the situation, it does cause problems. I had a, a neighbor across the street that had this orchid uh, get underneath their pavers. And we're going to dig this up in a, in a little bit, but the bulb, the pseudo bulb, they can get big. I don't think this is a small plant. They get they get high, um, and this doesn't even have any leaves on it. Um, and they get big, they get high, and they can be disruptive if they're growing underneath something. Um, and a lot of times, because they're they're pretty much nondescript, they can get in there before people see them. Um, they're shade loving, so they grow like they can grow underneath bushes where um, things are being mulched, and they can they can get in there, produce a lot of pseudobulbs. And again, my neighbor had his pavers, his concrete pavers, were lifted up because of the growth of the pseudobulb underneath those pavers. So that's a, that was a problem for him. Anyway, uh, for control of these, what do you do? Well, um, what was done here, this is, this, is, I'm not, this is not my house. My house is behind you. This is my neighbor's house, and he has a yard crew that comes in, and they mow, and they spray Roundup. And this was previously sprayed with Roundup. And it's still alive, and it's still doing well. Vigorous plant. Uh, but what happens, because there's a pseudobulb, you'll kill the uh, above ground portions of the plant. Um, and because there's such a storage in the pseudobulb, it puts out new leaves and new bloom spikes. So this is an old bloom spike from this plant um, that was probably sprayed. Uh, there's no now, there's no capsules that are on this. This is the, uh, they're the previous leaves that were coming out of the base of the plant are brown and dried right here. And then this is again a new pseudobulb. So what happened with Roundup is it causes the existing parts of the plants to kind of curl up and, and die. But because there's a pseudobulb underneath there, you're going to have a hard time killing it. So it takes repeated applications. And there's a lot of weeds that are, that are like this that have an underground extensive root system where Roundup will kill the things that, will, that are just above ground. But what's underground, especially if you've got a, 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 a pseudobulb, a bulbous um, system underneath here, um, they're going to retain enough energy to put out something else and get more growth. Um, the flowers on this, as far as you can't see much from where you are, uh, the flowers on this are, are they're not that special. As with many natives, this tends to be kind of greenish or yellowish. It has a... Um, a white throat with some purple splashes on the end of the throat. Um, it's not an ugly flower, but it's small, and it's not really something that gets that draws you in. Um, and most people, when they look at it, say, "Well, okay, you know, this isn't even an orchid, or if it is an orchid, ooh, should I save it?" Well, no, don't save it. Um, and yes, it is an orchid. Um, but again, the potential for making hybrids of this is, is good. I'm not going to do this um, unless, unless there's an interest in that. It's something that is not on my list. I've got so many other hybrids that I want to make. I'm not going to mess with this. Um, but uh, again, it, it's compatible with a few different types of orchids that are around there. You could potentially get a much larger flower, have it be much more showy, um, and then also get the vigor from this plant. Okay, so what are, you, what are you supposed to do about this as far as control goes? Well, I told you that the Roundup doesn't work, and the main thing that they tell you that you should do is just dig it up, dig them up, and, and toss them. And even when you toss them, 
when you get rid of them. Uh, and where I am in Florida, we have, um, we have yard waste. So we take all of our um, green waste from our yard. And in Florida, you generate, plants grow like crazy. You generate a lot of it. Um, and it goes out and I think it gets, um, it gets ground up and mulched and maybe you know, reintroduced. They tell you not to do that with this plant because as you might imagine, uh, it's so vigorous if you put this in your yard waste, it's going to end up maybe in somebody else's area. It's going to end up growing somewhere else. Uh, again, it's not a really bad uh, exotic yet, but it is a weed and it is, um, you know, it's kind of hard to get rid of as, as you can see here. So let me take a look at this plant and see how the, the, the pseudobulbs underneath and see how extensive it is. I think, again, this is going to be pretty small. But let me, let me dig this up and I can see, and I don't know if you can see where you are, the pseudobulb um, that's underneath it. But let me try to, <laughs> oh gosh, okay, it's not coming up easily. Okay, now it is. All right, so, and there's not much to this. So this is... This is the pseudobulb um, right here. And it's, to be honest, this is the first time I've dug um, one of these up. And it's, it's not quite what I was expecting. So it's, it is a, um, you know, it's a really big, large bulb, roots coming out of a lot of this. But I've seen situations where there's multiple pseudobulbs uh, on these plants. And when you dig them up, again, they can, get, they can get big. They can get the size of my fist or larger. And then they multiply and produce more bulbs. And they keep on getting big. And they, they kind of, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty disruptive. And, and it's pretty interesting. So with this thing, um, what I'm going to do is put this in my regular trash, not even the yard waste, and get rid of it. Now, you, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, it's so sad that he's pulling out and, and tossing this orchid. Well, this is listed as a class two invasive in the state of Florida, and you're, you're, supposed, to get, you're supposed to get rid of it. Uh, I'm not going to cross this with anything. I am just going to... Um, just kind of file, and, and they come up, you know, this is not the last plant that I'm going to see either in my yard or my neighbor's yard. They come up a lot. You see them in, um, you know, in parking lots, uh, the mulched area adjacent to parking lots around big box stores and things like that, and, you know, public areas. So it's a pretty common thing. Uh, to see and they bloom they bloom a lot and they're they're everywhere so if need be you know if if there's a need to make eh, it's a cute little flower but no uh, th there is if there is a need to make a hybrid um, there's gonna be I can get these really easily all right um, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video, a little bit different from uh, what I'm used to presenting. Uh, if you liked today's video and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And not for this one, happy propagating, but happy propagating to you.